Hello again. If we follow up the previous three tutorials, we've reached to a point where we could pause DNA sequences from FASTA files that we have downloaded earlier from NCBI containing numerous DNA sequences. In our example, our FASTA file contains 33 DNA sequences. In this tutorial, we try to plot the DNA sequences contained within the FASTA file that we've paused earlier on different plots, on different types of charts. So if you run the code that we've written so far, you know that we had the accession codes and the add-in in count. Well, the count could be for anything or any kind of statistics. You can change the type of the nucleotide that you, that you have or if the DNA sequence is not actually DNA, it's RNA, you could have uracil or combinations of nucleotides in like frequency parameters like dinucleotides or codons actually. So we don't need these two sequences, sorry, these two lines of codes. And we can start importing matplotlib as we have done in the very first two tutorials. We import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. We need to import a style so that we use a quite neat style here. So from matplotlib import style. There are lots of styles out there, but ggplot is quite neat and is very nice. It shows the plot quite nice. So you write down style.use, open close parentheses, and in between string quotation marks, write down ggplot. There are others like 538, but ggplot is quite neat. So our first plot is going to be a bar chart and we use a subplot so write down plt dot subplot and the grid that we supply is that we have two rows one column and this is the first plot and plt dot bar is to supply bar chart or to give us a bar chart we have x-axis as the x-axis data, and we need to show the first 11 data. And the y-axis goes the same thing, 0 to 10. Our label, or just let's set the color first. The color of the bars, let's say cyan, and our label is adding in count. You can make the label as it's written by latex, as you can see in books. This is important for labels that contain equations, if you ever need it. And plt.legend. can use location here, lock equals best. This is an automatic generation of the location and it's, it places it in a good place. You don't have to worry about it. plt.show to show the plot, save and run that to see whether you've done everything correctly. This is our chart. It contains the title of the DNA sequences, the accession codes, and the adding in count. The legend is here. Well, we could have written a count instead of adding in count because it's a long name. We don't need it this way. You could also have plt.title. Counting DNA sequence parameters to have a subtitle, you could have a backslash notation n adenine count just as a 
title and subtitle. Let's see if it adds it to it. And we have the title here and the subtitle here, which is good and quite neat, actually. Now for the second plot, we need to have a kind of percentage values showing up in a plot. And the best kind of plot to do that is pie chart. So write down plt dot subplot two by one by two. And this is the second plot. And plt dot pi for the pie chart. But for now, we need to show the data first, then the labels. Well, we could swap them, but I'm happy with this way. The y axis and the first 10 data sets. Labels equals x axis for the first 10 data sets, the same one, until it reaches number 11. We need to start at an, an angle. A right angle like 90 degrees angle start angle equals 90 explode equals numbers so the let the logic behind explode is to show you some slices that you are interested in viewing it so let's say you are interested in the first and the last data in your data and we have 10 of them and you want to protrude those slices. So let's see if we have a mistake. We'll double check that later on. We need to have it like a generator. All right, so to supply information, whether we want to have the percentages to be given to us as auto percentages, we have a an argument called auto PCT, and we write down this code: two percentage values, one point one f percentage value. So here we have two and one here. Don't worry about it. This is just a code that you have to write it to get the percentage values. And shadow equals true, and this argument is to give you a nice shadow on your pie chart just beneath the pie chart actually then save and run that to see if it's correct all right so we got our plot this is the pie chart and we got the percentage values here so that's how you create charts and write codes to get percentage values for the charts. And I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Thank you.